history is never complete. It's never complete. Kasi, you know, we say, what is our evidence based? Okay, on people who, who, who wrote something about it. But did everybody write everything about everything? How many of you write diaries? Come on, don't be shy. Does anyone keep a diary? Only gang? No one else? How boring. Okay, you write daily blogs. How many write uh, a daily journal, a daily anything? You, okay. L l let me ask. W when you write, do you write everything that happened? Nagising ako ng alas 6 ng umaga. Ah, Nag-almusal, ang kinain ko. Nako, isang itlog lang. Kulang yung allowance ko. Then, nagsipilyo. By 6.45, naligo na ako. Naghabol ako doon sa FX. Malilate na ako. MRT. I mean, do, do you do, do relate all those details? How do you choose what to put in? What's important? Very good point what you consider to be significant in your life. Now, what you consider to be significant in your life, would that be the same as what you consider significant in your life? No. And that's what makes history exciting. That's why we have to read many accounts, because eyewitnesses write down different facets of what happened. Iba yung lente nila eh. Siya yun ang na. It's like what I tell my students, if I require you all to watch a concert of, what, Maroon 5? Okay, Maroon 5. Uh, I will not pretend that I ever heard their music, or if I did, I would recognize it. I'm old, I admit. But anyway, okay. So, if I tell you, okay, class assignment, everybody go to the concert, and then write me a two-page essay. So in that sense, you are all primary sources because you witnessed the concert. You are all eyewitnesses. So if you are 50 people here, do you think I will get 50 identical accounts? Of course not. What will affect your account? Ikaw. Yes, kung saan ka nakaupo? Ikaw front row, siya bleacher. Di ba? Oh, what else? Maaring front row ka, pero sa tapat mo yung sound system na ganun kalaki, di wala kang makita. Maliit. Oh, matangkad siya, maliit ka. So yung taong sa harap mo, gusto mong sakalin dahil wala kang makita. Right? What else? Kung nakikinig ka, the degree of attention. Because it's not your type when you're bored, you're texting, you're making daldal. Right? Or your preference. I remember when I watched Sting, I don't know, when he came years ago, uh, I practically only looked at him because I think he's a very attractive man. And especially when he removed his shirt. That wasn't bad. And, um, and it depends who you have your eye on. When I watch concerts, I look, sometimes it's, it's the drummer that attracts you or the guitarist or the saxophonist. So that changes the focus of your attention. So 50 eyewitness accounts and 50 different eyewitness accounts. So you have much to choose. Now, what about an event that nobody wrote about? Ah, dun tayo patay. Wala kang magawa. That past is gone. And we lost a lot of records in this country. When, I don't remember if it was T.M. Kalau or another collector at that time who, who donated to the UP library, the old, the original campus sa Refaura, yung mga na-collect, yung mga materials niya tungkol sa Katipunan, etc. And then, yung Japanese occupation during the war, the Japanese took over our campus. And they wanted to cook. And kailangan nila ng papel to burn, panggatong, panggatong to, to cook. So they went to the library. And they used our archives. We, that was burned. Burned, gone. That is the problem of history. That it is not possible to reconstruct everything. There, were, there are parts to us that will really never be known because the materials aren't there. Sometimes the materials are there, but just not in our country. 
Huh? I was very privileged uh, last year when I was reading, because next year, I hope the students will do something, huh? some advertisement. Next year is Bonifacio at 150. 150th year ng sesquicentennial ni Bonifacio. And this November 30, the National Historical Commission will launch the kick-off activity with a little Katipunero fun run. Uh, mga batang ages 8 to 12, 500 meters, 1 kilometer. Para man makasali ako sa 500 meters. Kayo naman. Beyond that, malaking hamon na yan sa akin. Ano? But um, because of the... I was starting to do research about it. And I was reading this journal article. And this historian, I think he's British, he was referring to some material boxes he had found you know, in, in, in Spain, in Segovia, because when the Spanish military discovered the Katipunan, they just collected all the materials they could find. I got them. Not the original, but I, had, I have a digital copy. The only one, because I asked for it, and the, you know, it's in, the, it's in the military archives in Segovia. Many of them are documents in Tagalog, coded messages, uh, all kinds. Some are in Spanish, uh, some are in, in Tagalog, in the 19th century Tagalog. You know, yung, iba yung, yung spelling, no? But um, this is an advantage. Do we have a new view? There's stuff in these sources that we didn't know before, but now we're getting to learn about because they became available. So, can something you write now be overturned 10 years from now? Absolutely. Because suppose you discover the source I didn't use when I wrote it 10 years ago. It doesn't mean I was telling a lie. It simply means that 10 years ago, those were the only sources available to me. And then you discover something else and you write a new account that completely changes what I write. That is contributing to knowledge. That is contributing to history.